After my disastrous attempt at using crowns in my last bullet journaling video, I decided to try again. Hi everyone, my name is Charlie and welcome to my channel if you have never been here before. Welcome back if you aren't. Today we are going to be filling out my November bullet journal spread. And I'm really excited for this spread. It is definitely one of the longer spreads that I have made in the past. And it was <laughs> one heck of an emotional journey. If you haven't already, it would be super duper awesome if you could give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe down below. It really helps out. Thank you. So, on with the video. I used these things called twistables last time in my bullet journal from in my bullet journal spread for October, and that really brought back childhood memories. So this time, I found some great crayons and picked out a bunch of nice green hues to draw with. Can you guess what I'm drawing? Alligators. <laughs> I had such a hard time choosing an animal for November because upon reflection of past spreads, I seem to be very drawn to birds. March, April, and July were apes, so goes the scientific name. May and August consisted of marine species. January and June were African species, leaving October, September, and February up in the air for just random animals that I really found cute and adorable. <laughs> now, while alligators do live in fresh water, they spend a lot of time on land in places like Florida in the southeastern USA. What drew me to the alligator is that I really wanted to draw a crocodile because animal documentaries I started watching featured so many cool looking crocodiles, but I also wanted some diversity. So here we go. <laughs> to start off, the inspiration for this photo was of how the crocodilia carry their babies in their mouth. You would think that when a baby goes into a mouth, it doesn't come out. However, I suppose alligators are like pelican who have a pocket in their mouth. While pelican use their galgo, which is their pouch, as a storage container, alligators store their babies on the way to the water. It is actually a really adorable sight and I don't believe I did the photo justice. Trying to shade with these crayons was surprisingly difficult. I watched all these videos on how to use crayons because I wanted to become professional by doing this spread, but I mean, I think, I think it looks beautiful, but I don't think I did the photo justice. <laughs> I used the method where you're supposed to scrape off the top layer of wax with something sharp, and by doing so, I also got rid of all the shading that I did in the actual image. I spent so much time working on this top mouth and trying to make these crayons work out. It was a lot of layering and scraping off with nickels and layering and scraping off. Altogether, this mouth probably took about two hours because I got so frustrated with the crayon shavings that were all over my desk and paper. But yeah, most of this earlier coloring was just me trying to get the right shades for the alligators because alligators are very dark in color and as you can see my alligator looked a lot like a fresh blade of grass or like a green gummy bear like an apple freshly picked from a tree not a murky predator that will come up from the water and kill you in one final swoop also at least i can say that i worked my crayons to death because I broke a couple of them, and I think that is how you know that you are a true professional crayonist, because if you don't break the crayons, then are you really crayoning enough? I used a scrap piece of paper underneath the spread page just so that I wouldn't get any crayons or shavings onto the previous page, and you'll see later that that did me no good at all. <laughs> you, you know, Sometimes you just gotta try things out, and that's exactly what I did here. It was also very satisfying to scrape off wax, so at least there's that. <laughs> because I couldn't get the dark shade that I wanted for the cover spread, you can also see that the baby inside of the mouth looks kind of light, but I do go in and add some shading and some depth that I don't end up scraping off, just so that it looks at least from a distance like the baby is sitting inside a mouth. The baby is only a little questionable, but overall, the tail is a masterpiece, and I have to say, it is so beautiful, like, the alligator just has a, t a tail out of hanging out of its mouth. Ugh, I love it. And I mean, oh my gosh, when you just, like, see the little baby eye, 
can you imagine? You're like, oh my gosh, is someone eating this baby alligator? And then you peek down and realize that the alligator is just peeking out of the mother's mouth. Okay, sorry. I'm just so mind blown. To rectify and solve my frustration with the crayon shavings, I used a sheet of paper, as I said before, underneath so that I didn't get any crayons on the back of the pages or on the side of the spreads. But that didn't work out, and I still got shavings everywhere, so in the end, I decided to solve my problems the same way I have solved my past bullet journal problems, by painting over the entire cover spread. And I do think that this made the spread 10 times better with layering and gradients. Unfortunately, I forgot to hit record when I was cleaning off my paintbrush and didn't get the beautiful gradient, but you can still see the end product. And honestly, I love picking out colors and hues and things. You can see my collection of green paints that I brought out. I don't even know where half of these green paints came from. I feel like I've just had them forever, like I was born with them. Anyways, this painting truly ruined my nails. This has nothing to do with the bullet journal, but I felt the need to tell y'all that I painted my nails and they looked so nice, and then I did this bullet journal spread and ruined them completely. So, there you go. This is why Charlotte cannot paint her nails. For the calendar spread, I decided to use my leftover paint to color the rows in because by now I had spent a good three hours on this bullet journal. Learning how to use crayons professionally is so hard, so if any of y'all have any tips, please let me know in the comments. Or if you have any other materials that you would like me to try out, let me know because I might be so inclined to use them or try them out in December. As you can see, I also went over my calendar spread with paint because my attempted crayonism <laughs> was just not working out. I did, though, attempt to draw a lazy alligator in crayon. So, yeah, that was that. I really enjoyed this spread, and fun fact, I originally wanted to make my alligator suspended over a mossy bed of water. However, I totally forgot what I was doing, so I didn't realize until after I had painted half my page dark green that I was doing something wrong. And yes, because I have not done a lot of crayoning and this video is supposed to feature me learning how to use crayons, I do go back in and use crayons for my lazy alligator. And I think the crayons worked just as well as it did the last time, except for this time I was more acceptable of the light color of my crocodile and decided that it just matches the rest of the calendar so no harm no i don't know the saying it's beautiful and my alligator feels beautiful internally and that's all that matters right next spread that we have is our weekly spread which is uber simple all i did was take some metallic paint that i hadn't used yet that i really wanted to and drew a border on the top and the bottom in one big swoosh it's shiny and sparkly and i do go back over once to make it look a kind of like a spooky pair of teeth and i don't know where the spookiness comes from maybe it's because i didn't do a lot of spookiness in october that i decided to put all my spookiness into this spread we have the dark green gradient that almost looks like a light we have the predator which is this my only predator i mean an owl is technically a predator and a seal so maybe not the only predator that i have drawn so far in my bullet journal but one of the most well-known and most reputable predator so for this next spread this was so much fun. After everything that I'd been through, it was just nice to take a sponge and let out all my frustrations by punching the page. No, literally, this was so relaxing and I decided to make this page a beta reading page. For those of you who are new here, I am an author tuber and one of the very important steps in writing is to send your book to others for feedback. As I have a couple of beta readers, I wanted to stay on track editing their work and receiving feedback on mine. I debated making a tracker for NaNoWriMo, which is National Writing Month, however, I did not use my tracker last year, so I decided not to make one this year, and if there is any doubt, then I can always just fill one in later. 
we are almost done y'all i just have to go in and add all my titles and fix my calendar because i forgot what day november started on and fixing my calendar was a lot of work because the row of green is very luminescent and transparent where the background is really opaque so what i ended up doing is taking some tape covering it up and then repainting over several layers onto that same with the markers the weekly spread is very minimal very simple same thing that i've been doing in my past spreads i just need something that works you know it doesn't need to be all that pretty if it's a weekly spread because the calendar is what i'm probably going to spend the most time on in my bullet journal so for all of this i also took a white posca pen and had to go over several layers of my titles to make sure that was opaque enough but overall i really did enjoy making this bullet journal and i'm very proud you do notice in all my bullet journal spreads that i do spend a lot of time on the calendar spread and i think that's just because as i mentioned it is my most used spread yes i use my weekly spreads a week at the time but the calendar is where all my scheduling information is and I actually made this bullet journal spread in the middle of October because I had no idea what I was using or doing in November. So I had to get all of that organized. So even before October is over, I'm already using this November calendar and that's just how I stay organized. You can also kind of see my head here and I apologize writing in and trying to not mess up these dates was a struggle as it normally is but thank you all for staying and watching and journaling with me or being productive or doing whatever you are with me right now it is such a blast to have y'all here please don't forget on your way out to hit that subscribe button if you haven't and that little notification bell if you want to be notified every time i upload a new video i tend to fluctuate i post once a week but in november i make exceptions for nanowrimo and yeah i cannot wait so yeah thank you so much for watching and i will see you all next time bye